Welcome to this episode of an in-depth look at installing Linux on the PlayStation 3 Part 2. This episode, I'll focus on my thoughts of running Linux on the PlayStation 3, also the installation process, and my performance results that I saw. I'm going to focus a lot on the installation process because I thought that was particularly of interest, so I'll start with that right now in this episode of an in-depth look. Let me say, I'm kind of sorry about the angle of the camera. I didn't realize in the viewfinder that it was crooked. All right, so we start off here. You see the PS3 has built in. It allows you to install another operating system. It's already in the menu system. Every, every PS3 has that. But you have to partition and format the drive first. I have an 80 gigabyte hard drive in my PS3. So if you just jump up a few menu options, there's a format utility. You say format your hard drive, and what it's going to ask is do you want to format the drive for the entire PlayStation 3 C PS3 system, or do you want to allocate 10 gigs to another OS, 10 gigs to the PlayStation, and then you choose that. So I'm saying, you know what, let's give 10 gigs to another operating system. It goes through, it wipes out the partitioning, so I think it might, if you already have a partition set up, it's going to wipe it clear. It's going to be deleted off the system, then it sets it up, you reboot the PlayStation, and now you have essentially another partition that's perfect. Now that my disk is partitioned, I go ahead and I say in install another operating system. This is th this is the point where you have to have the Linux installation CD in your drive. Otherwise, you're not going to get any further. I chose the uh, I think they call it PS Ubuntu. It's um it's a version of PowerPC Ubuntu, which is community which is community maintained, and then they specialize it for the PlayStation Three. So now that I've sort of prepared the system for an installation, I have to go choose my default operating system, the one I want the PlayStation to boot to. So I select that here, and now I can reboot the PlayStation. It'll reboot to the screen fairly quickly, so at this point you'll need to have a USB keyboard and mouse hooked up so you can continue the installation process. Then it's pretty, the, pretty much the standard uh, Ubuntu text installer, and yes, it's as hard to read for me as it is for you right now. It's when you stretch this up to a 1080p display, it's pretty tough to read. But you'll go ahead and you choose your partitioning. I just said do the guided partition. It only sees the 10 gigs the PS3 set up so you cannot accidentally blow away your PlayStation stuff. The install was probably the longest Linux installation I've ever witnessed. It was excruciatingly slow. I mean very, very slow. I got bored. I, I didn't know what to do with myself so I decided to goof around a bit. And and I began to worry that this was a bad indication that PS3 and PS3 and Linux might not be a good combination. I wasn't sure if it was drive speed, if it was CD-ROM speed or what, but at this point I'm beginning to get a little worried that I might not be happy with my results. After what felt like the longest installation process of my life, it reboots just like any old Ubuntu text installation, which felt a bit old to me at this point. I, I guess I haven't used the text installer for a while. I used to be a huge fan, but at this point it feels pretty dated. It reboots and boom, I've got an Ubuntu login screen in my living room. And I and I was delighted to hear that little chime, the little question chime that Ubuntu makes when you get the login screen. Because that meant the audio out through the optical hookup to my receiver was working. So I, using my USB keyboard, logged in and I was presented with the traditional Ubuntu desktop. It was pretty exciting actually to see that up on my screen uh, in, my new, in my new living room. I used to have an, a Linux machine hooked up, but not in this house. And it's just kind of, I don't know, kind of exciting to see that. I guess I'm a huge geek for that, but I really got a kick out of it. The next step was to run some performance monitoring. I just fired up GLX Gears to get a base kind of frame rate as an indication because I could feel the system was excruciatingly slow. I mean, very slow. I've been working on it for a bit now, and I was pretty concerned at the speed I was seeing. As I was sort of starting to fear during, during the installation process, uh, the performance was pretty bad. It was slow. One example, I think, uh, when I ran the uh, GLX Gears test, I got around 150 frames, 130 frames per second. On my machine, that can be well into the thousands, and, and at least even under VMware, I can still pull off around 350, 400 frames per second. On the PS3, I was getting around 150. That's a pretty bad indication. So I decided I'd do a little bit of research. I had heard before that uh, the PS3 ran Linux in an emulation environment, and I suspected that might be true, especially when I did the disk partitioning, and I saw that it uh, only saw 10 gigs. That during the early phase of the PS3, I, I allocated 10 gigs. 
I've, I set that aside in the partition manager inside the PlayStation OS, and then when I boot into Linux, it only saw that partition. So I began to wonder if I was in some sort of locked up environment. So I went, I went online, I did some searching, and out, out of all of the different resources, I actually found a lot of information at IBM's website. They talk a lot about using the P PlayStation 3 for PowerPC development. And in there, they confirm my suspicions. Linux does run in a hypervisor, so a virtual machine, something kind of like, uh, if you're familiar with Zen, it's a lot like Zen, uh, and you have limited access to the hardware. They lock down, for example, the ATI video card that's in the PlayStation and only give you 2D access to it, and it's slow at that. Uh, the networking hardware is a little funky, too. You can access the wired network adapter or the wireless, but you can't use both. Once you choose one, the virtualization hypervisor locks you to using that hardware. I began to run, run into these uh, performance barriers. For example, the disk access seemed particularly slow. When I was installing all of the updates for the Ubuntu operating system, it was very, very slow. It, the, the reading of the disk, reading the, the app get database, things like that took an especially long time. Loading applications as it was waiting for the disk to churn uh, were very slow. To the point where I've decided I'm not going to go forward with attempting to load something like Myth TV or Xbox Media Center XBMC um, because I just don't believe the performance is there. That said, I'm curious to see what people out there are doing with Linux on the PlayStation. After I did part one, I got a lot of feedback from people that say they're doing it. And so what are you using it for? What is it, what is it that, uh, that you find you can utilize with that hardware limitations in place? Is, is the processor speed still good? Could I use it for some computing tasks? Things like that. I'm curious what, what use people are getting with PlayStation and Linux. I, I suspect it's just a toy at this point, which is what I had feared, and I think that might be right. And I'm a little, well, I'm a lot disappointed, to be honest with that. I, I was hoping for some kind of cool stuff. I, I don't know if Sony will release an update to their hypervisor down the, down the road that will improve performance. I can hope so, um, because it does have a lot of potential if I could get, um, you know, great great speed. Maybe maybe they limit it on purpose to try to sell desktops. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not going to go buy a Sony desktop because I can't get great performance on my on my PS3. So that's that's something to consider. But if you're using it, hit me up. You can you can give me a shout on Twitter, twitter.com/slash chrislas, or send me an email, chris c h r i s at jupiterbroadcasting.com, and I'd love to hear what you're using Linux on the PS3. Maybe it's just not worth my time. That's possible. Hopefully by now a lot of you have had a chance to save some money by using our promo code LINUX when you check out at GoDaddy.com. That saves you some money. In fact, I think that's up to 20% now. And it helps us bring these shows to you because without that sponsorship, we don't get paid. It's awesome and we really thank GoDaddy for doing that. But GoDaddy is at it again. They've created two new commercials for the Super Bowl. And they're going to let you head over to GoDaddy.com and decide which one should air during the big game. I'll play them immediately after this, check them out, and then go vote on which one will show at, at during the Super Bowl. Plus, you get to see a little bit extra content that isn't going to be shown on air if you get my drift. All right, everybody, thanks so much for watching this episode of An In-Depth Look, and stay tuned for those GoDaddy commercials. They're great. Insert news, Calmeros. I never enhanced, period. Miss Lemons, enhanced? My accuser misremembered. <laughs> Miss Patrick? Yes, I've enhanced. <gasps> Miss Patrick? It's true. I've enhanced my image with a domain name and a website from GoDaddy.com. Enhanced? <gasps> I'll show you enhanced. Dudes, check it. Oh, your new domain name and website from GoDaddy.com? Yep, and now that I'm online, it's like I can make anything happen. Danica Patrick! Hmm? Suddenly I have the urge to take another shower. This is awesome! Keep watching! This is my fifth shower today. Steamy! Steamy? Let's add the German woman from the Dean's office. Miss Schmidt! <laughs>